Pope Francis recently released his first encyclical letter entitled Lumen Fidei, The Light of Faith. Now, an encyclical letter, for those who aren't familiar with that term, is a letter issued by the Pope to the entire church, to the bishops, to the clergy, and to the lay faithful. And it teaches authoritatively on a particular topic. So the topic for Pope Francis's encyclical is faith itself, the light of faith. He's really continuing the work of his predecessor, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, whose two encyclical letters were on charity and hope. So for those who are unfamiliar, faith, hope, and charity are in fact the three theological virtues. So this is the final theological virtue that Pope Francis is writing about. And in doing so, he actually acknowledges that this encyclical is based largely on a draft that was written by Pope Emeritus the Benedict XVI before he left office. And so it's really the work of two popes, of four hands, so to speak. I'm going to talk about this uh, encyclical over the next few weeks in a series of YouTube videos. So this video is going to cover the introduction, and then each subsequent video will cover a different chapter in the encyclical letter. The Pope begins his encyclical by speaking of the state of affairs or the current state of faith in our world. And he begins by noting that in the past, in ancient times, or even a couple hundred years ago, faith was viewed as a form of knowledge. It was the way that the world was understood, was always through the eyes of faith. But then as our reason came of age, so to speak, as we began to understand things scientifically through the Enlightenment, Faith seemed to become a type of superstition. It wasn't seen as a form of knowledge, but ultimately was seen as a darkening of knowledge, as a way of preventing us from knowing the truths of the world. And we see this all the time in our world. Think of the way people view the Galileo and church uh, controversy. They view it as the church trying to prevent the truth from being known. And in many ways, people still view the church that way as trying to hide the truth or prevent people from knowing the truth. They view faith, then, as something of a darkening, of a leap in the dark, or as perhaps blind emotion, or some kind of a subjective light, perhaps, something that might bring light to my personal life, it might bring me some personal consolation, but it doesn't bring any kind of objective truth, it's not going to help humanity to know the world. Now, historically speaking, this is utter nonsense. To think that the apostles would go out to the furthest ends of the earth, facing all kinds of trials and ultimately martyrdom for something that just brought them some personal consolation would be completely utter nonsense. It would be ridiculous to think that anybody would do that just to tell a message that brought personal consolation. The apostles went to the furthest ends of the world because they had had an encounter with the living God, the God of the universe, and they wanted to spread his gospel, his good news, to all of the world. And in doing so, they believed they were preaching truth, a truth that taught humanity the deeper realities of who humanity is, of our dignity as human beings, of who we are in relationship to this world, and who we are in relationship to God. They were teaching our ultimate destiny, as well as providing us with a way of understanding our entire history. That's what the apostles were doing, and that's what faith is. And that's what Pope Francis says we need to recover. That sense of faith as something that can enlighten our path forward, as well as shed light upon our past. See, what he notes is that in the process of trying to find meaning in our lives, what's happened is there's become so many different philosophies, so many different understandings of the world, that people have given up the idea that we can actually know something true in terms of our ultimate destiny or our ultimate meaning. And instead, we've just settled for these smaller lights of truth, something such as science, where we can glean you know, some kind of truth about the mechanics of the world, but that's the best that we can hope for. The Pope is saying that that's not the best we can hope for. We need to understand faith. And when we understand faith, it's going to illumine our past as well as our future. It's going to provide us with meaning. It's going to provide us with our ultimate destiny. See, the Pope also notes that if we don't do this, what tends to happen is the light of faith goes out, all other lights go out as well. And certainly we've seen this in the past century. We saw the communist regime in Russia or the Nazi regime in Germany, and we saw how as faith was removed, People all of a sudden became commodities. They weren't seen with any kind of a dignity, and all the lights went out. I mean, you look at what happened in those two regimes that I just mentioned, and you realize it was a great dimming of all light. And the Pope says that's what's going to happen if we don't recover this sense of faith. 
See, with a sense of faith, we're given our ultimate purpose, our ultimate destiny. Think back to some of the great works from the Middle Ages, uh, the great works of arts and the great cathedrals and things. They're always pointing to something that transcends us, something greater than we are. They're saying that there's some greater dignity, something that we can achieve, some greater potential. Now compare that to something like modern art. Modern art doesn't look to something outside of us to provide us with this great light, this great path forward. Instead, it kind of says, I'm going to take something and I'm going to impose my will upon this. So it might, uh, you know, contort metal into some kind of discontorted shape or something like that. And in a sense, it becomes, you know, what I want it to be. You know, reality becomes what I make of it as opposed to something greater, something beyond me that I can strive towards. Um, and that's really the difference between a world that's marked by faith and a world that's not. Um, faith can transform our lives. When we have faith, we enter into this relationship with a God who is love. And all of a sudden, in that relationship, we see that this world isn't arbitrarily here. It has a purpose to us. See, this is something that reason alone can't give us. Reason alone can explain the mechanics of the world, certainly, and it can help us to understand how the world works, but it can't shed light onto our ultimate destiny, on who we are, onto our own dignity. Only faith can do that. And so that's what the Pope wants to recover in this encyclical, is this sense of faith, and to help us understand how, through faith, we can make sense of our history, of our past, as well as we can get a glimpse of our destiny, of our ultimate goal, of where we are to go as human beings. And so this is the foundation for which the Pope is going to build the rest of his encyclical. So it's important for us as we approach this encyclical to understand the state of affairs of faith and understand that we need to change this. We can't allow faith to be seen as this darkening force or as just this sentimental kind of emotional thing that we have that provides us with some subjective comfort but has no basis for objective reality. But instead, we need to contend that faith can in fact show humanity as a whole the path forward and can show each individual the dignity of every human being.